ever wondered what makes our experts tick? You're about to find out as we unlock more secrets from the Roadshow archives. In the interest of balance, tonight we're making room for both ends of the scale when it comes to the appreciation of antiques. Two of our longest standing roadshow experts will reveal the finest objects to come their way in 30 years on the show, pieces they'd love to own. Do you like it? And on the flip side, we'll be finding out why some owners simply can't stand their heirlooms, no matter what the specialists say about them. They're not a pair, I should say they are. And roadshow veteran Eric Knowles remembers the first time he stepped in front of the cameras. Way back in 1981, I was 28 years of age, which is remarkable, because I'm only 32 now. And Catherine Higgins explains why she thinks kitchen collectibles can be a smart buy. If the trend continues, yes, I think we're going to see prices going up. Not too high, I hope, so that I can still buy a few things myself. Now, you may be surprised to learn that if you ask one of our experts the day after a roadshow which item they like the best, they often can't remember a single thing. Perhaps it's not so surprising when you think they can see thousands of pieces flash before their eyes on a typical day. So imagine how special a piece must be if they can still picture them with affection five, ten, even twenty years later. They must really be something. David Batty from the ceramics team and John Bly from the furniture desk now pick out the best of their roadshow finds. Oh, is that this little one is uh, honey. I think it's yes. sweet. And it is probably the most wonderful piece of furniture I've seen. It's a staggeringly good example of its kind. Unsurpassable. I had no idea. Well, it doesn't happen very often, but when something wonderful does appear, I mean, it is a great thrill. I think probably the first thing that occurs to me when something amazing is unwrapped is this has got to be a forgery. No way could this be happening here. There is nothing that can describe adequately the thrill when you find something that is really, really wonderful. And although I say it's rare that they do turn up, enough times to make it uh, imperative that you do another programme just to find out. Well, I am delighted you've brought this in. For me, this is the most exciting object I've seen on any roadshow. It's absolutely marvellous. It's Japanese earthenware, what's called satsuma ware, and it's a fantastic example of its kind. When a really interesting thing marvellous. is presented to me, um, I, um, I'm more than happy. The body is enamelled and gilt with the, in the most wonderful way with Tokugawa Mon, which are the badges of the princely house of Tokugawa. I'm glad you brought it in, it's terrific. Paul really is one of the programmes which has, has stuck in my mind, largely because of a Satsuma Ewer that came in, um, sort of pear-shaped with a dragon spout. And the spout and the handle are just one sinuous dragon, brilliantly modelled. I mean, you can see it's almost alive. And I get hopelessly besotted by objects. <laughs> Uh, my house is a testament to that. At the moment, I should think this is probably worth about six to eight hundred pounds. As much as that? Mm -hmm. It's my belief that this particular type of wear is going to prove in the long term an extraordinarily good investment. I'm the sure Satsuma Ewer would have increased in value and then crashed because it hit another recession. And at the moment, I would be surprised if that ewer made more than two and a half thousand. Quite extraordinary. And it's ridiculous. It's a really superb object. It doesn't make any sense at all. I think the one piece that stands out um, beyond all others, as far as rarity, equality, and to me, beauty, has to be the commode in the Isle of Man, which, looking back, has to be about 25 years ago. She was left to me by an elderly lady who I was very fond of. This is probably the most important piece of furniture that's ever been shown on a roadshow. Yes. 
It's quite extraordinary, and I would think, without any doubt, the most valuable piece too, but more of that later. It had absolutely everything that one would hope for in an important piece of furniture. Fantastic thing. It stood as if it could have walked off the stage. It was just so full of life and movement. And then it was covered with marquetry, and this beautiful marquetry was again, or it was foliate, but they were, they were flowers that you could have picked off the surface. Ah! The leaves on here would be green, the rosebuds pink, and there you would have a bright blue ribbon. So you have all these bright, sparkling colours that come down. And once you've seen that, you know, you say, look at that, isn't that great? It's a piece of furniture that is of national importance, and even on international scale. It was made by one of three or four people, possibly a man called Pierre Longlois. It was made by a cabinet maker who had a workshop in Paris and a workshop in London. And in Paris, he was known as Pierre Longlois, and in London, he was known as Peter Langley, which I think is wonderful history. Having said all that, I must tell you that it's a piece of furniture which could realize 35 to 40,000 pounds. No wonder you asked me to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I've had two or three things of that sort of combined construction and look, but nothing ever as important and as beautiful as that. No, it was lovely. Oh, I'd love another one. <laughs> yes, occasionally we get items so good, even the experts are queuing up to share the limelight. We have here what looks to me like a piece of oriental porcelain with a Western Victorian mount. Uh, Skegness, that was the Burgess bottle that was just muck. Now, do you know who William Burgess is? No, apart from his name on the... On the but that doesn't mean anything to you? Not a lot, no. Right, where do we begin? <laughs> um, we could be here for hours. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most important Victorian designers. Yes. Of architecture. William Burgess was this extraordinary designer and he did do small objects, and what he usually did was to take something that already existed and then build round it. And this was a little Chinese bottle which he had netted in gold. This particular piece he made for himself. How do you know he made it for himself? Right. Um... <laughs> Two reasons. <laughs> One is he actually bothered to put his name on the bottom. Now, he's not just saying, I made it. He put the names on things that were for the owner. Therefore, we know that it's he made for himself. I mean, the money to me is, is, is not the important thing. What's important to me is the object. Objects are not inanimate. They will tell you a story. Furthermore, there is a set of photographs of his house taken in the 19th century by Francis Bedford. The album is in the V&A in London, and this bottle is illustrated in that book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. as a, is it really? And it hasn't mm -hmm. been seen since. since. No. It's, it's a discovery. And that story is really the drama and the excitement of the roadshow. Yes. OK, well, let's go, yes. come on with the price. What do we think? We well, where do we start? begin? Ten? Pounds? <laughs> thousand? A thousand pounds. No, ten thousand pounds. I'll, no. I'll raise you on that. Twenty. I'll have to consult my um, client. Um, <laughs> Twenty-five. I think somewhere around twenty to thirty thousand. Really? Absolute top, yes. How amazing! Yep, it's so a wonderful, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing, never seen before. And we won't see it again. One sold um, sometime later for uh, I think twenty thousand or twenty-five thousand. So we were in the right kind of area. Thank you. Well, I'm so pleased I brought it. I remember at Wisley, this very charming lady had brought in this great cupboard. It was one of those things that you see across the room and you know it's going to be good. This was of its type. Well, this is magnificent English furniture from the third quarter of the 19th century, between 1860 and 1880. 19th century furniture is, 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 is not my first love, but quality is. I mean, it, it was incredible. It was given to me ten years ago as a wedding present from a great aunt. Um, she had emigrated to South Africa some 20 or 30 years before and had been in storage in Edinburgh for all of that time. It just arrived? Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> I was trying at the time to think of some intelligent questions to ask and not doing very well because he obviously knows a great deal about these things and I know very little indeed. If we can trace it to a maker, then 